Article 17 Abolition of Untouchability Article 17 Abolition of Untouchability states that Untouchability is abolished and its practice in any form is forbidden. The enforcement of any disability arising out of untouchability shall be an offence punishable in accordance with law. So in order to further elaborate this article, I would like to bring light upon the below mentioned paragraph. In the exercise of the power conferred under Article 35, Article 35 basically empowers Parliament to make laws into ALIA prescribing punishment for those acts which are declared to be offences under Part 3 of the Constitution and to give effect to the mandate contained in Article 17. Parliament enacted the Untouchability Offences Act 1955. To examine the working of this Act, the Committee on Untouchability, Economic and Educational Development of the Scheduled Castes was appointed in 1965 by the government itself. To implement the recommendations of the committee, a bill amending the provisions of the Untouchability Offence Act 1955 was introduced in Parliament in the year 1972, which was later on passed in the year 1976, and after that the Act was renamed by the name of the Protection of Civil Rights Act 1955. So let's begin with the protection of the Civil Rights Act 1955. With the advent of this new act introduced by government, it made significant changes in the original the Untouchability Offences Act 1955 as mentioned below. Firstly, the expression civil right has been defined as an need right accruing to a person by reason of abolition of untouchability as per Article 2, Clause A. Secondly, all offences relating to the practice of untouchability have been made no compoundable. It is mentioned under Section 15, Clause 1 of the Act thereof. Further, offences entailing punishment of imprisonment up to three, year, uh, three months have to be tried summarily. Thirdly, Punishment for offences relating to untouchability has been enhanced. Fourthly, it has been declared a duty of the public servants to investigate offences relating to untouchability. It is further provided that a public servant who willfully neglects the investigation of any offence punishable under this act shall be deemed to be an abettor. It's uh, laid down under section 10 of this act thereof. So he shall be deemed to have abetted the offence punishable under the act. Fifthly, the privately owned places of worship have been brought within the purview of this act. Preaching of untouchability or its justification has been made punishable as per uh, section 3 of this act. Sixthly, the state governments are empowered to impose collective fines on the inhabitants of an area involved in or abetting the commission of offences under the act. It's mentioned under section 10a of the act. Finally, the Act seeks to set up a machinery for better administration, uh, enforcement of its provisions. It's laid down under Section 16, Clause B of the Act. So further, I would like to come upon the below mentioned paragraph, which states that the word untouchability in the Protection of Civil Rights Act 1955 has been used in the same sense as in Article 17 of the Constitution. But this term, untouchability, has not been defined either in the Constitution or in the Act of 1955. Literally, the term includes treating persons untouchables either temporarily or otherwise for various reasons, such as suffering from infection or contagious diseases 
or on account of social observances associated with death birth or death or social boycott resulting from caste or other disputes so we have a landmark case over here the name of the case is state of karnataka versus appa balu ingale all india report 1993 supreme court 1126 so in this case the supreme court held that the untouchability was an indirect form of slavery and only an extension of caste system caste system and untouchability the court stated has stood together and would fall together it follows that in the ordinary sense of the term untouchability it is a practice which prevailed in the hindu society it was however generally accepted in the constituent assembly that the purpose of article 17 was to abolish untouchability in all its forms whether it was untouchability within a community or between various communities for the article 17 has been held to be a very significant provision from the point of view of equality equality before the law it guarantees social justice and dignity of man the twin privileges which were denied to a vast section of the indian society for centuries together this article is similar to the 13th amendment of the constitution of the united states of america 1865 which abolish slavery and empower the congress to enforce the abolition of appropriate by by appropriate means for the commission of any of the above offenses relating to untouchability the protection of civil rights act 1955 prescribes punishment which shall be imprisonment for a term of not less than 1 month and not more than 6 months and also fine which shall be not less than 100 rupees and not more than 500 rupees the per, uh, the punishment for this act is laid down under section 3 4 5 6 47 of the act respectively article 6, 17 declares the practice of untouchability in any of its form as an offense punishable according to the law the term law in article 17 includes a law passed before the coming into force of the constitution we have another landmark case the name of the case is people's union for democratic rights versus union of india all india report 1982 supreme court 1473 in this case the supreme court held that what whenever a fundamental right contained in articles 17 23 or 24 was being violated by a private individual it would be the constitutional obligation of the state to take necessary steps to interdict such violation and ensure that such person should respect that right merely because the aggrieved person could not himself protect or enforce his invaded fundamental rights did not absolve the state from its constitutional obligation Thanks for watching this video. Do like, share and subscribe. Thank you and have a nice day.